Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Marcy Samuelson, and I'm Marketing Manager for the Developer Initiative here at Oracle. Thank you for attending today's workshop, Explore the Converged Functionality of Oracle Autonomous Database. We are very excited to be able to share with you what Converged Autonomous Database is and show you how to build data-driven applications utilizing many different data sources. If you have any questions during the workshop, please put your question in the chat area and we will answer your questions as quickly as possible. We have a number of technical experts on the call to help you as you go through the lab material. This webcast is being recorded and we will be making it shortly available after the webcast concludes. We will also make the slide deck available so you can review what was discussed. Again, thank you for joining the workshop, Explore the Converged Functionality of Oracle Autonomous Database. I am joined today by Sean Stacy, Outbound Product Manager for the Oracle Database, David Start, Product Manager for the Oracle Database, and Kay Malcolm, Director of Product Management for the Oracle Database. Please take a moment to review our safe harbor statement. So for the next two hours, here is our agenda. Sean will provide an overview of the converged Oracle Autonomous Database, and then Kay and David will guide you through what you will do in the workshop. We have a number of technical experts to help you as you perform the lab, and if you want to talk to somebody about an issue you are having while doing the lab, we can put you into a breakout room so that we can resolve your questions quicker. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Sean and play a video of an overview of the Oracle Autonomous Database. Um, and then Kay will get you started with the lab. Hi, and welcome. My name is Sean Stacy. I'm an outbound PM with Oracle's database development team. Whether you're using the latest innovation release, Oracle Database 21C, or perhaps the long-term supported release, Database 19C, the Oracle Database is the only database that provides a single data management platform to support all of your data management needs. We're gonna to talk to you today about the converged functionality of the Oracle Autonomous Database. Today, we are seeing a new range of data-driven applications that operate on a completely diverse set of data from spatial, documents, sensor, transactional, you name it, all being pulled from multiple different sources, often in real time, and creating value from that data in very different ways to traditional applications. For example, our customers may be using machine learning to make real-time recommendations to customers or to detect fraudulent transactions. Perhaps graph analytics is in play to help identify influencers in a community and target them uh, with specific promotions or campaigns. Perhaps spatial data is being used to help keep track of deliveries. Um, these are all ways that we're seeing uh, the importance of data and that diversity of data becoming more and more important in enterprises today. In order to keep up with the competitive landscape and speed of change, these same data-driven applications are being built using new development paradigms, models such as microservices or events for uh, function as a service, uh, just-in-time execution, uh, data deployed in a distributed manner um, to replace these monolithic systems with farms of hundreds, if not thousands, of individual data stores. Uh, continuous innovation, continuous deployment. We're seeing applications now, uh, what used to take potentially months or weeks or even days to implement are now being implemented uh, on much shorter life cycles than even that. Um, we're seeing uh, API driven development for deploying workloads across much more than just simple terminals uh, in a back office environment. To solve many of these problems, our customers are turning to uh, different types of data stores. And there are many niche uh, database vendors out there. Uh, and then there's some big ones like Amazon Cloud, for example. Amazon themselves have, uh, in terms of relational databases, they have Amazon Aurora, they have the Oracle database, they have SQL Server, they have PostgreSQL, they have MySQL, and they have MariaDB just for their relational databases. In addition to that, we're seeing many niche databases to, uh, available to solve very niche solutions, single solutions, Snowflake Data Warehousing, for example, um, Neo4j to solve the spatial problem, or the spatial and graph problem, I should say, MongoDB for document stores, uh, analytics engines. Uh, these 
uh, vendors are producing data management solutions that focus on these one specific requirement. Oracle, on the other hand, has the ability to support all of these different unique workloads and the unique um, processing that they entail as well. But we're able to do that in a single converged uh, open SQL database. Uh, we can run all of these multiple uh, workloads uh, and manage ma and maintain all of these uh, multiple data types all simultaneously. What's often overlooked with these niche database vendors is that uh, they might be very good at solving an individual problem, but once the uh, customer or the business uh, requires some in form of interaction between these individual uh, data stores, uh, they encompass or they encounter, I should say, problems between uh, working with that data simultaneously across these different data stores, ensuring that data is uh, in sync, ensuring that data is secure, ensuring that data is highly available, and most of all, ensuring that data can indeed interact with one another. Only with the Oracle Converge database is all of, are all of these problems solved for you in one single place. So let's take a look at some of the ways in which these uh, new development paradigms can be solved using the Oracle technology platform. When it comes to microservices, uh, we have the uh, pluggable database models, a multi-tenant uh, container database architecture to solve that very elegantly. Uh, we have uh, queues to solve the events problem. We have uh, data as a management service or ORDs, if you wish, to solve that API-driven model. Uh, we solve uh, software as a service with multi-tenancy. We have tools for low-code development with Apex. Uh, we can support distributed data, both through real application clusters, as well as through sharding. Uh, we can support uh, continuous innovation, continuous development with online redefinition. And we can support defense in depth with the native security features available to you in the Oracle database today. So let's take a look at uh, simplifying the microservices architecture. We see many workloads in this model being deployed uh, as Docker containers, being orchestrated with Kubernetes and having their data management perhaps running as a uh, Docker container as well. Well, with the Oracle uh, container database and a pluggable database, it's, it's possible to run what would have been uh, a, a data management solution running within a container to now be a pluggable database uh, to perform just that workload. Perhaps if there's a specific component of that workload that needs to be scaled, perhaps the recommendation engine uh, needs to be scaled out to support uh, additional customers. It's simply a case of cloning and provisioning an additional pluggable database to solve that problem. Perhaps there's a document store uh, that needs to be added to this workload. A new pluggable database can be created to solve that problem very effectively uh, and running on top of a real application cluster environment, the availability and the security of that uh, container database is managed effortlessly for you uh, with the converged database story. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're able to solve the queuing uh, issues with uh, Oracle has a, an event driven queuing, uh, queuing capability. Um, that's available to stream data to and from Kafka. We in fact have a live lab to demonstrate that. Uh, we can use Golden Gate replication to stream database changes into Kafka uh, to support those very high volume uh, transaction workloads. We also can query events from Kafka effortlessly uh, with the database um, event driven model. Um, in addition to that, uh, it's, it's possible to um, use uh, REST or API driven architecture and Oracle's REST data services uh, to orchestrate and to codify, if you wish, the, um, the deployment and provisioning and scaling out of individual databases or pluggable databases. We can also use the REST APIs on top of uh, SQL or stored procedures to expose uh, application functionality and data services functionality as a uh, REST data service. In addition to that, uh, container databases can be used to simplify, simplify SaaS or software as a service architectures. It's possible to have individual tenants hosted within their own pluggable database to solve their own specific workload. Um, these workloads can be uh, relocated to other servers as and when the need is required effortlessly uh, using refreshable clones, using plug and unplug, et cetera. Uh, we've found, we found this to be uh, extremely beneficial and we're in fact using this same service under the covers to support our NetSuite customers, our Fusion App customers, and our Teleo customers, just to name a few. When it comes to low-code application development, Oracle Application Express provides uh, a very easy to use tool to get up and running and to um, 
deploy in a very uh, cost effective way. Um, you could start from a single spreadsheet or a table and build an application from there. And you know that behind the scenes, the Oracle database is managing all of the, um, the maintenance and the relational model and data management under the covers uh, implicitly for you. Now we talked earlier, or I mentioned earlier about uh, distributed data and Oracle provides a native sharding capability to scale to those thousands of potential data stores that customers may require. Um, each shard can be placed in individual countries if data sovereignty is a problem you're trying to solve. Uh, perhaps there's massive scale out you're looking for. Oracle data sharding has features inbuilt uh, to support enterprise style workloads, meaning it's very easy and effective to, uh, to, to run queries against the entire uh, cluster of shards, uh, to run it across individual sharded databases. It's very easy to perform maintenance operations uh, on the entire sharded database um, that other uh, native sharded databases do not perform too well. Uh, when it comes to data evolution and continuous innovation and continuous delivery, Oracle's EBR, addition-based redefinition, provides a way to allow you to implement code changes um, without incurring any downtime or interruption on the backend database. Now, in addition to uh, being able to develop and uh, leverage um, the data that, that these da data-driven applications require, the new paradigms that are introduced, um, there are also uh, new ways to extract and uh, see value uh, in this data um, with the Oracle database. So if we look at machine learning, for example, Oracle makes it extremely easy to build applications um, that are able to leverage these data-driven predictions. We have over 30 in-database uh, parallel-driven machine learning algorithms um, that can be automated. Um, we have the ability to call those uh, in, uh, in memory uh, machine learning, or not even in memory, in database uh, machine learning algorithms. Uh, we can call them through SQL, through Python, or through R. Um, they're completely extensible as well. And best of all, all of these machine learning algorithms are completely free to use, and they're in all editions of the Oracle database. Now, in addition to that, we also support real-time analytics uh, with our in-memory columnar store, meaning that you can perform analytics on transactional information as it's changing without having to, to take that data and stage it in an alternative or uh, in another location. Uh, we're able to give you the power of analyzing that data um, and perform the analysis um, um, as and when it's changing and drive that data from the OLTP or transactional systems that it's based upon without having to relocate that data to a warehouse. In addition to that, we also have a, a very rich graph analytics uh, offering. So Oracle makes it much more simple for applications to discover and leverage your data to discover influences, for example, dependencies, communities, ranking, uh, etc. We also have declarative SQL-like queries to make development easy. Um, we have over 50 in-memory parallel uh, analytic graph functions. Uh, once again, this option uh, is completely free to use with all database additions. Um, and then one final thing, we also support the open source property graph uh, query language or PGQL, which allows you to specify graph patterns, which are matched against vertices and edges in the graph, meaning that you can take workloads that were developed for, for other graph databases and run them against Oracle's uh, graph analytics uh, without uh, very little changes required. We also have a very powerful document data store. So Oracle uh, makes it easy for applications uh, to use JSON and XML uh, and to store those documents within the database seamlessly. We have a feature called Simple Oracle uh, Object Document Access um, to allow you to natively talk to collections and documents without having to understand uh, the relational models. They support schema evolution uh, and a schema, uh, a schemaless development models uh, effortlessly. In addition to that, uh, we provide a very powerful text search engine to give you the ability to perhaps build these um, these uh, rules engines to perhaps come up with uh, search websites and catalogs to provide linguistic analysis. Uh, best of all, these operations can be run against your uh, documents as well as your relational information um, with very little effort. We also have a rich suite of spatial data solutions. The Oracle Spatial Data Engine uh, provides out of the box hundreds of in-database spatial operators and functions. Um, these are all free to use within any edition of the Oracle database. Um, Oracle makes it simple to build applications uh, that may be looking for uh, spatial uh, location and analysis 
um, that may be looking at computing distances between people, places. Um, it may be used for uh, analyzing transportation or utilities networks to determine uh, most efficient routes, et cetera. Perhaps it, uh, the use is uh, land management. Um, the reason we bring up these examples is we have customers uh, today using Oracle spatial data in, in these deployment uh, modes. One of the more recent features that Oracle has introduced is that of blockchain uh, data. So you may recall when I was talking about the niche databases, I mentioned Amazon's QLDB or the Quantum Ledger Database. The Quantum Ledger Database is a standalone database engine uh, for uh, running a hyperledger. Um, Oracle's blockchain uh, tables provide a mechanism to store cryptographically chained data uh, within the Oracle database in the form of an Oracle table. Uh, the benefit of this is that these cryptographically chained tables can sit within an existing database and can be used transactionally with other uh, tables and other views within the database, as long as those operations adhere to the immutable requirements of a blockchain table. All of this is managed seamlessly and implicitly for you uh, with Oracle's blockchain table mechanism. Uh, one last feature I wanted to talk about is Oracle's uh, Internet of Things offering. We have a, a MEM optimized for insert capability in the Oracle database to allow for a very fast ingestion uh, to capture streamed workloads and to, uh, to uh, upload and insert that data into the database um, extremely quickly. Uh, we can perform ultra fast, uh, up to 25 million inserts per second on a two socket server uh, ingestion of data. Um, and we can integrate this with time series analytics to allow you to instantly analyze uh, this IoT data. So to wrap things up, the Oracle database has a, a slew of uh, converged features to help you quickly uh, meet the requirements, the, the heavy requirements of these da data-driven applications and this distributed um, mode of uh, data management, um, whether it be um, for storing data of disparate types, or whether it be storing documents, or whether it be distributing these workloads across very uh, large scaled uh, deployments, or whether it be uh, performing operations such as ingestion of data with very low latency, the Oracle Converged Database can meet the best of all worlds, if not exceed um, the benefits that these uh, single purpose niche data management solutions can offer for you. So thank you. Okay, Sean, that was great. Um, uh, so you guys got an intro of the Converge database and let's get to what you guys came for, the hands-on part. So in this next part, we are going to introduce you guys to the live lab. Um, we spent a lot of time working on this live lab and we're excited to uh, give you guys a hands-on to what uh, Sean was talking about. So first, let's just talk real quickly about live labs. Live labs is actually something that my team and there are a few of of them on, Tom again, Cameron, Vincent, David Start. Uh, we came up with while delivering an event in Beijing, uh, we use the Oracle Apex database um, and centralize all of this great content that the Oracle experts um, inside of Oracle and our partners um, had created. And we made that um, available to everyone for free. Um, so it's not a static thing. We've got about 150 workshops um, in the system right now and another 150 in development. And so we're super proud of it. And that's what we're going to use today. Marcy, next slide. Okay, great. So um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get you guys access to Oracle Cloud. Um, so the first thing we need to, to have you do is open up a browser um, and obtain what we call an Oracle free tier account. Um, and you should enter the bit.ly that's on your screen and that's bit.ly slash 21, like 2021, 0128. So open up your browser and do this now. I'm gonna give you about five minutes. Um, and if you have any issues, if you will um, put the issue in chat, we're watching the chat right now. Um, we've got our free trial team here standing by. If you have issues, we'll put you into one of our breakout rooms or we'll answer your, your issue in chat. Okay, so ready, set, Marcy, if you'll click next, go. Okay, so I'm assuming that you guys have an account. 
The next thing we're going to do is actually to access the workshop in Live Labs. Go back to your browser, enter the next bit.ly link. This link is going to take you to our workshop guide. And so the link is bit.ly slash lab guide, that same number, dash 210128. Okay, so when you, when you go to this link, you will be prompted to log in with your Oracle account. Now you may be wondering, oh, what, which Oracle account? Um, this is the account that you use to register for today's session. It's that account and we call that our Oracle single sign-on. Um, so I'm gonna give you a minute to access the workshop so that you can follow along with me. Uh, it is 28 past the hour here in Atlanta. Um, so I'll, I'll give you two minutes um, and we will get started again at 30, uh, at the bottom of the hour at 30 minutes past. Okay, so I'm assuming that you guys click the button and you're on the live lab. Um, so here's what comes next. David and I are going to walk you through this workshop. There are three main parts um, of the workshop. There's the setup, which I'm gonna walk you through. And then we pick two, we pick JSON and, and uh, Spatial to do with us here with the Oracle Peeps. Um, David's gonna walk through the other two, that's the JSON and the uh, Spatial Lab. Um, now, one thing that I want to mention, let's just kind of take a quick pause. Um, these workshops that we're presenting, this one is the converged functionality of autonomous database. I kind of alluded to this. Live Labs has a huge catalog of, of material. It's available 24-7. Um, and this particular workshop that you all see, Cameron Vinson, Ashish Kumar, and a whole host of folks, Sean, created a great soda lab that um, is available. I want to encourage you after this in, um, event is done to go back, do some more workshops, and really use the uh, free tier account that we have provided for you. OK, so. Um, we are gonna add additional labs. We're adding a graph lab uh, shortly, and we're uh, gonna also add an advanced JSON lab that um, a couple of us database product managers are working on. Next slide. Okay, so I want I want to talk about the architecture. Um, I'm a visual person, so you can talk, you can show me, you know, you can you can say all sorts of things, but I really need to see a picture, um, uh, or otherwise I just I won't understand the architecture. So this particular workshop features a compute instance that is connected to the autonomous database. Um, this application that we're using, we call it eShop. Uh, it does mostly transaction processing. So there are three flavors of the autonomous database. There's autonomous data warehouse or ADW, autonomous transaction processing um, or ATP, which we're using today. And then the autonomous JSON database that was recently re released that we call um, AJD. Um, the workshop's gonna show you how simple it is to set the database up. We preloaded uh, data into the object store that you see on the right side of the picture. And so you're gonna pull data from the object store into your autonomous database using data pump to load the data in a matter of seconds. Next slide. Okay, so to me, one of the neatest parts about this workshop is the entire thing is done in your browser. I don't want you to download PuTTY. I don't need you to download the client for SQL developer. Um, I, I don't need, if you're a Mac user, you don't need your terminal. Everything that you're gonna do for this workshop can be done within your browser. The reason that that is the case is because of a service that came out about a, a year ago uh, called Oracle Cloud Shell. Um, Oracle Cloud Shell is a terminal built right into the Oracle Cloud. So um, before you set up your compute instance, what you need is you need an SSH key. Um, and you're gonna create that SSH key in the first lab. Um, and this is so that you can log into the compute instance. If you remember the picture that I showed you before, the compute is connected to autonomous database. And so you need to log in to the compute so that you can do the data load on um, 
autonomous. And, in that, and then you can also explore that compute because that's where the application is running inside of a Docker container. Next slide. Okay, and so I'm not gonna give you guys a break to do this. I'm just gonna kind of cover this and then we'll take a pause so that you can actually do the workshop. Um, so once you have your SSH key, then you need to set up your cloud resources. And we do that with something that we call Oracle Resource Manager. Um, it's like an environment builder, if you will. And so with, with Resource Manager, you literally feed Resource Manager a Terraform script or a set of Terraform scripts in a zip file, and then out pops your cloud environment completely configured. Um, now, I want to mention some things about Resource Manager really quick. Um, we've got a lot of sample scripts for Resource Manager. That is, um, if you go on uh, HashiCorp's website and the Terraform examples GitHub, you can uh, download uh, some of these examples, and it's for every cloud service that we have. Um, also, we also have an Oracle Quick Start GitHub that features one button deployment um, of some of these uh, uh, GitHub, um, I'm sorry, some of these Terraform scripts. Um, oh, okay, one more thing. So Cameron Vinson, who is on, um, really helped you guys out. She recorded herself doing labs two through labs five. So if you are actually looking at the lab right now, you'll notice that we've included a video of the recording. So if you get stuck, of course, we are here to help you, but you can also watch Cameron doing the lab so that you can see what the lab uh, steps and the results should be. Okay, next slide. Once your environment is created and that's your compute stack and your ATP instance, you need data. Right. Otherwise, you know, you really can't do the lab. Um, so you're going to move to lab three. And in lab three, um, we are going to prepare to load your data so that your Docker container has something to access. Um, you're going to use SQL Developer Web. That's going to be your gateway to access the ATP data. Remember, I mentioned that you can do all of this inside of, of the browser. So you don't need the actual SQL Developer client. Um, and then you're going to connect to the autonomous database with your Docker container, and then your setup is complete. Next slide. A few housekeeping items. This is on the right hand side of your screen. Um, post any questions, and I see that there are additional questions that are in the chat panel. Um, if you're having any issues, uh, we are going to put you into a break room. We'll, if we can answer it, we'll answer it in chat. If not, we'll put you in a break room and then there will be somebody standing by to assist you as you do your, your lab. Um, David is going to uh, now take over and then he's going to get into the meat of the event, the JSON lab and the spatial lab. Next slide. Okay, David, take it away. All right, thanks, Kay. <clears throat> so, in the previous presentations, you heard Sean talk about the benefits of the converged database, and then Kay just helped you get your environment set up. Now is the time to get your hands on the environment and try out JSON Spatial. So, JSON, if you're not familiar with it, it gives you the ability to store data, index it, query it, all inside the Oracle database without a schema to define the data. Sounds a little strange, I know. You're still gonna need objects to store the JSON data. You're actually gonna do that in the lab, so you'll, you'll see how that works. But they won't have a traditional structure around them. So you're gonna create a table. You're gonna have, or the table will be there. You'll create the table. You'll have a column on it. That column will store the entire JSON document. So you're not gonna create a field per every value you're gonna store. Um, you're actually just gonna create a single field that we're gonna put everything into. If you, again, if you're not familiar, that's why you're here to do the lab. This is giving you that flexibility of schemaless and document-based storage, along with relational applications all in the same database. And actually, in this lab, all in the same table. Um, so here, if you take a look at the screen, we take a look at a JSON document and what it's gonna look like. So JSON document is actually made up of fields. So you can kind of see that with the address book, the name, the phone numbers. Those are what are called fields. 
in a field that actually has a value. So like Mary Laveau, that's a value. A value can actually also be an object. So you can see an address is actually made up of an object. And that object is just more fields and more values. But a value can also actually be an array. So if you look at phone numbers, we just don't have one value there. We actually have multiple values. So you can see the flexibility. We didn't have to go and alter a table and add more columns to it. We just actually added more data. <laughs> so we get the flexibility within that JSON document, and then we can take this entire JSON document and stick it inside of a single column. So you can kind of see that flexibility as we start needing to add more and more data, or we have to adjust our data model to match something. We're not having to add tables, do alter columns. We don't have to do all that work. We can just go ahead and adjust the model as we need to. So within the database, we can actually store JSON in a native binary data type or we can use a Varchar2, a blob, or a clob as shown. So if we go to the next slide. This workshop here is broken up into four sections. So first we're gonna set up SQL Developer Web, which Kay was talking about. Um, and I actually have a, a couple slides coming up that's gonna talk about what we need to do. Once you're connected though, uh, you're gonna have labs that are gonna work on how to insert data, how to update data, and how to query that JSON data. The lab itself is gonna take about 20 minutes. Um, and Kay talked about this as well, that in the introduction, there is a video. Um, if you're not quite sure, you, you want to kind of see those steps, the video will actually show you how to actually do the lab. If you've got a question though, again, jump into chat, ask us a question there. At the end though, there's two appendices. Those are there for reference only. Don't execute them. Uh, they're just, again, for reference. So if you go to the next slide. All right, so the confusing steps. Step one. So when K set up your environment, there's a script that you're gonna run. It's called loadatp.sh. This sets up the users, right? Gets some of the data loaded, that, that pull from an object store, right? There, all that stuff's gonna happen. But in there, there's this command that says rdsadmin.enable schema. There's a lot of stuff here. Well, really what really well, this is doing is, is granting the user app JSON the ability to run SQL Developer Web. But this little red box is around app JSON. What that's doing is creating a text string we're gonna use in our URL here in a minute. Again, don't get confused. I'm gonna show you another screenshot in just a second. So if you click to the next slide. All right. So when you actually go through the steps and you click the button that says launch SQL developer, you're gonna look up at your browser and it's gonna have this long URL. Um, the URL is actually gonna say like basically your database name, where to log into it. There's a lot of inf information there. There's that ORDS, right? That came from that command on the previous screen. But you see where it says admin? That admin is actually the admin user of your database. But we don't wanna log in as admin, we wanna log in as user app JSON. So that ORDS command that we ran in the previous, that uh, the one I showed you, we're gonna substitute the word admin with app JSON. And now this is actually gonna give you the prompt that you can actually log in with app JSON with the password for app JSON and follow the rest of the lab steps. Um, this, is, this is explained to the lab, but I just wanted to call it out because it does get a little bit confusing. So when you go click on SQL Developer Web, we launch it, you'll see this URL at the top. The only thing you're changing is that word app, the word admin to app JSON. And then you should be able to log in just fine. All the rest of the steps were already done for you as part of the load when you did it um, in the previous steps with K. Again, the only thing you're changing is admin to app JSON. Then you should be able to get in and have a whole lot of fun with, with JSON. So if you click next, we're gonna talk a little about spatial. All right, so spatial. If you look at the document documentation, Oracle documentation on spatial, it says spatial data represents the essential location characteristics of real or conceptual objects as those objects relate to the real or conceptual space in which they exist. <clears throat> and that is a mouthful. Um, really, you can consider it more um, in terms of saying storing, retrieving, manipulating, and leveraging location and, and geographical information. 
right? So we're talking about map coordinates. We're talking about calculating the distances between two points. We're talking about routing. We're talking about tracking physical asset locations. Um, and even easier, let's, let's look at some examples. Um, are things in the same location? Well, let's look at map coordinates and see, are they? Um, who's the nearest? Well, we look at map locations and say, well, this one's near, this one's closer than this one. What tax zone is this in? Well, we can take a look at a map and say, well, are they in the tax zone or are they not in the tax zone? Um, where can we deliver in 35 minutes? Well, when you do the lab, it's actually kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna save that one for you to try out in the lab. Um, what is my sales territory? Well, we can calculate that, right? It's just a location and we figure out the area. Um, is this built in a flood zone? Well, we can calculate a map area of a flood zone, figure out where you are based off your map coordinates. Are you in there or are you not? Kind of cool. So all this is actually just provided very simple interface. You don't have to go and figure out all of this stuff behind the scenes, all this technology is provided in a very easy to use interface as you'll see in the workshop. So if you click next, you can leverage spatial data along with your relational data in a single query when you do this workshop. You're gonna see that. But think about it when you talk about map visualizations of your business data, what would that look like? So if you look at that map, you can plot all your sales data based on a customer address. Kind of fun. Spatial data gives utilities a way of tracking where something might be buried or locations of assets. But again, that's just one piece of information about that asset. So maybe we have JSON data that has service records. Maybe we put information about the model in traditional tables. All that can be stored together, maybe in the same table, maybe in the same database, maybe all within separate pluggable databases in a converged database. All of it's an option. Maybe we have network data model. Maybe we have you know, grid data. We have 3D point cloud operations. We have location tracking servers, topology management, all this stuff in a geographic information system, right? All that data is stored that we can leverage within an application. So you can start looking at where's the pizza guy, right? Inside your application. All that's available again, through that, the geocoding available through that um, that you can use in your app. What's cool though is it's easy for developers to add those spatial abilities, those capabilities um, to applications because we use standard SQL and Java based APIs. We have JSON and REST support, and we have integration with database tools, Oracle Business Intelligence, and other applications. All that is very easy to use. We get those interfaces. You're going to see some of that when you start doing this lab. So if you jump to the next section. All right, so the scenario, you're gonna walk through of how do you identify, identify which customers are near a given warehouse to inform them of new advertising promotions. So of course, we're gonna have to look at spatial data to determine distances. We're also gonna have to look at some non-spatial data. So again, I talked about, we're gonna actually combine this data um, and start looking at it. But then you're actually going to look at rankings. So as you go through this, don't just copy, paste, and run. Look at some of these queries and try to figure out how would you do this otherwise. It's actually pretty fun. I, I enjoyed doing this lab as I was going through it. Um, so go ahead and click to the next slide. All right, so how does this workshop go or flow? Again, SQL developer. We're going to set up the web connection. Again, I've got some slides. We'll talk a little bit about that. Once you get in there, you're going to run some queries. Um, take some time, go through the queries because they're very interesting how they work. Um, traditionally, you know, I came from the app dev and, and data, data warehousing and DBA side. I didn't get a chance to play a lot with spatial queries in my day to day work. So this is your chance if, if you're in the same boat to play with spatial. It's fun. Um, so the lab will take about 30 minutes. Uh, again, there's a, a video demo at the beginning if you're not quite sure or we're available here uh, to answer things in chat. Again, two appendices at the end, reference only. Uh, don't execute those. Um, they're, they're just, again, for reference. So if you go to the next slide. Again, we talked about the load ATP.sh. This time it's setting up a different user. So we had app JSON before, 
Now we're doing AppStat. So go to the next slide. The only thing you need to worry about here is when you go do this lab, you'll click on SQL Developer, but instead of changing the admin to AppJSON, we're going to change admin to AppStat, and then we're going to log in with AppStat. So if you got it to work in, in the JSON lab, you're going to do the exact same thing here, but instead of changing admin to AppJSON, we'll change admin to AppStat. And that's it. Just enjoy, have some fun with these labs. We'll be available here for the chat. So if you click to the next slide, we'll get you going on the labs. All right, Kay, Mercy, I don't know Thanks. what to do. Must take over? Yep. Thanks, David and Kay. Um, I'm going to go back to the slide that we had. Let me find it. Like this one, because this is where we, we want you guys to start. So the um, exercise, the lab guide is um, on the slide here. You wanna open that up in a tab and then make sure that you get your free trial. If you can go ahead and either raise your hand or give us the thumbs up that you got your trial, um, we would appreciate that so that we kind of have a, a gauge on um, where you guys are at. And then go ahead and get started with lab one, two, and three. Um, these labs should take you about 30 minutes or so, 40 minutes, um, and you get the rest of the time. So we have about an hour and 10 minutes. Um, and then when you're done with these three labs, then you can move on to four and five. And then I'll display those in about a half hour or so. So go ahead and get started. And again, please post any questions you have in the chat. Um, we are here to answer them. We have a number of people uh, to help you. And uh, if you need to be assigned to a breakout room, uh, to ask more questions about your particular issue, we can do that as well. So, um, and also, that go. Um, if um, you're in the middle of doing the workshop and the instructions um, don't jive, remember there are the videos at the top of each of the labs. Great point, thanks. Okay, it's at the bottom of the hour and we have about 30 more minutes left, but I just wanted to kind of go over some additional resources that you might be interested in. Um, there is a product page that has more information on Converge database, um, as well as a technical brief that you can access, which is a white paper. And then there is this blog. So the first three items here are informational. Um, you can also try out another lab, as Kay mentioned earlier, uh, as well. There's many in the catalog, and the link is provided, as well as attend another workshop that we have coming up, um, which is the link there. Um, we will, you can also get in touch with the three presenters from today using their Twitter handle, he, um, handle here, so feel free to do that, and um, We'll just continue on with the lab. Uh, we're here to answer any questions that you have, so please don't be shy. Um, please let us know where you're at with the lab. If you've finished um, labs one, two, and maybe most of you are probably in lab three by now. Um, so feel free to let us know about that. And uh, we appreciate you being attending our workshop today and uh, we hope it was useful. So we'll be um, hanging around for another 30 minutes to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Okay, so we are at the top of the hour. I just wanted to thank you again for attending today and feel free to reach out to the speakers if you have any additional questions. Um, we appreciate you attending today and we hope you have a great afternoon or morning, wherever you're located. Thank you. <laughs>